Happy New Year, everyone. I hope you had a blessed Merry Christmas and a wonderful New Year celebration. Um, I don't know about you, but the Christmas season is one of my favorite times of year. Uh, to say I'm busy would be an understatement. Uh, first of all, when you work for a church, it is one of your busiest times of year. On top of that, for the past five years, my wife and I have produced an annual stage production of It's a Wonderful Life, a live radio play. Uh, if we do it a, again next year, you really should come out to see it. It's a really great show. But you, you add to that uh, the children's school concerts and all the normal hustle and bustle of the Christmas season, and it seems we hardly have time to breathe. But it's fun, and it helps keep me focused on the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Then we come to today. New Year's has come and gone. The Christmas tree is showing signs of withering. Uh, we don't take it down till after the Epiphany on January 6th, but it seems that every year I, I get less and less motivated to water it after Christmas Day. Each year at this time, it's like a switch in my heart where I start longing for spring. The next big thing I look forward to is Easter, and that doesn't come until April 21st this year. That's almost four months after Christmas. Months full of many short days, gloomy weather, and generally more isolation than we experience during the warmer seasons. Each year I go through the same thing, a sudden drop from the emotional highs of the holidays to the seasonal depression of feeling the long winter drag ahead of me. I'm not alone. Psychologists have a diagnosis for serious cases, seasonal affective disorder. I don't think the acronym for this disorder, SAD, is a coincidence. It can show up in a variety of ways. You may have difficulty focusing, experience anxiety, have feelings of hopelessness, nausea, withdrawal from social activities, chronic fatigue, or a number of other symptoms as well. Each year, I see people minimize the effect of depression in others. Whether it be advice to just snap out of it, or memes shared on social media suggesting that if we just sit down with a good book or take a trip to an exotic locale, everything would be better. As someone who's been through it, I can vouch for the fact that depression is not that simple. As Christians, we need to be more sympathetic and offer a listening ear and supportive shoulder to people going through this, whether it be seasonal or year-round. Some well-meaning Christians offer the advice that we should simply pray and God will take our worries away. Now, I don't by any means want to minimize the importance of prayer. God does promise to support us in our times of need. But that does not mean that the depressive feelings will just magically disappear. God is not a cosmic vending machine where you insert your prayer and out pops whatever result you ask for. About the worst thing we can do for someone in this situation is to tell them that if they only had enough faith, their depression would go away. Because when it doesn't, and it often won't, then we've just added something more to depress them and help, them send, help send them into a deeper spiral you've added on feelings that they aren't good enough to God. You see, we live in a fallen world, and God never promised to take away all the bad stuff in our lives, allowing us to live comfortably and happily. But that doesn't mean he's left us without hope. When Jesus finished telling his disciples about many of the troubles that were going to come on the earth, he said this, he said, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. We will face troubles in this world, but this world is not all there is. There is a life after this one, and for believers it is a glorious one. There is hope in that. When you read a book for the second time, the darkest moments in the middle chapters don't have as much of an impact on you as they did the first time through. That's because you already know the ending. You know that the hero will live happily ever after, so to speak. See, we are all living in the middle chapters of our lives, and we will face dark moments. But God has shown us what the final chapter of our book will be like, and it is a happy ending. If we keep our focus on that ending, then that can give us some comfort to persevere. But if we still find ourselves struggling, we cannot be afraid to reach out for help. Here at Trinity, we have something called the Heart Ministry. You don't need to be a member of Trinity or even a Christian to partake of their services. HEART stands for Health Education Advocacy Response Team. HEART can help connect you with resources that can help you through a multitude of health issues, including depression. They will walk side by side with you during your journey. Please don't be afraid to ask for help. Whether it be through our HEART ministry 
or if you're not here in the greater Baltimore metropolitan area, then through whatever resources are closer to you. You can contact Heart Ministry leaders Jan McMillan or Tom Reed at the information you see on the screen. God bless you all, and I wish you a wonderful start to 2019. God bless.